for being here today, for all the communities and all the different groups that are represented here today. We are coming together because we're united in our support for the Palestinian people. So I'm delighted to share a platform with so many great speakers and so many great friends. We are here to support the Palestinian people, whether we're Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, or of no faith. Our unity is the human unity. The demonstrations that have happened since the bombardment of Gaza took place and the eviction of people from their homes in Sheikh Jarrah changed world opinion. We had almost 200,000 people on the streets of London, probably one of the biggest demonstrations in support of Palestine anywhere around the world. Demonstrations on the global map took place on every continent and in most countries. But one place that really pleased me to see such big demonstrations in support of Palestine was in the USA. Well done, our friends in New York, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, San Francisco, and all the other places where they demonstrated in such enormous numbers. I hope they're able to assert that power to influence the Biden administration and the Congress of the USA to do what they haven't yet done, and that is recognize the state of Palestine. Our uh, demands are very clear. The end of the occupation of the West Bank the withdrawal of all the settlements and an end of the settlement policy. An end to the siege of Gaza. Now, it sounds a sort of fairly neutral term to say Gaza is under siege. I've been in Gaza many times. Every time I leave and I'm able to get out, I feel so sad and sorry for those who have no ability to travel, no right to travel, and living in poverty with high education and an inability to develop your life and your economy is devastating. Power cuts, shortages of water, shortages of medicines, and all the time surrounded by fences and looking on to Israel where there's plenty of electricity, plenty of water, and plenty of food. Occupations are wrong, siege is wrong. And so when the G7 conclude their discussions in Cornwall, I hope Doris Johnson does two things. Ditch the private plane and show some commitment to the environment in, and get the train back to London. But more importantly, more importantly for the G7 is this, our world, is faced with an environmental crisis. Our world is faced with a human rights crisis. Our world is faced with an inequality and poverty crisis exacerbated by COVID. The answer to those problems is not more arms, more wars, more cold wars. The answer to those problems is to support the people who are up against it to end the human rights abuses and the sale of arms that encourages those human rights abuses. So, wouldn't it be great if the G7 concluded by saying, end the occupation of Palestine, end the arms supply to Israel, support the Palestinian refugees and recognize the, recognize the rights of the Palestinian people. I'll finish on this, I was proud to lead the opposition for five years. And I was very proud, very proud to put in our manifesto in 2019, recognize the state of Palestine and the needs of the Palestinian people. Our strength is our numbers, our strength is our message, our strength is the truth behind our message. Stand together.
for the freedom of the people of Palestine and the unity of all of the peoples. And 